So let's first uh, set up the problem clearly. We have a network like this one in, uh, in the slide. Um, and, and we have groups of nodes that are uh, connected by positive edges. Uh, and these are the colored uh, within each color nodes. While nodes between different uh, groups have a negative edge. And this is a sign network that can be clustered. So the objective is to find the colors while we are not given it. So find the groups of nodes that are mostly positively connected between each other. Um, this can be useful to find uh, communities in social network where you know, plus and minuses can be friends and foes. Well, it can be used to find product suggestions for users and uh, most importantly for time series analysis. If you take a correlation of a time series, you have, have positive and negative correlations. So at the beginning of our projects, we had three aims. Uh, uh, the first one is, was simply to write, uh, write an open source Python package uh, which implemented most of the existing algorithms on sign networks. This is actually important per se because uh, these algorithms have been developed in the last 10 years. The interest in sign networks is quite recent and there hasn't been really a study on how these perform you know, on, against each other on a wide range of, uh, of situations. Um, then, of course, we wanted to use this knowledge to develop new ones that possibly can perform better than the others in particular, uh, particular settings. And finally, we also wanted to check uh, how these new and old algorithms work on real data set, on vast uh, amounts of real data. So um, we did write the package, uh, Python package, um, implementing uh, essentially three kinds of algorithms. And these all work in a similar way. So you start with an objective functions that, if maximized, gives you the clustering. So uh, it gives you the right, uh, the, the assignments of nodes such, as within, such that within each node you have positive weights, uh, and between each uh, different clusters um, you have negative weights. Then this objective function is relaxed in a convex way. So the constraints are relaxed uh, either to obtain a spectral algorithm, so you are just uh, uh, use the eigenvectors of a matrix, or a semi-definite program, or a generalized uh, eigenvalue problem. So these are only implemented in this package uh, that we then, uh, that is uh, freely available on GitHub, uh, well, and the documentation is also available online uh, on read the docs. Um, well, there is still a lot to do on making the documentation really useful, but at least it is already set up. It's just a matter of making uh, uh, some uh, tools for automatic uh, documentation generation work that at the moment don't work. Um, but you know, please feel free to have a look at the code if you feel like it could be useful for you. Um, so we then focused on uh, analyzing spectral relaxations, which, of which Peter will, Peter will talk about. Yeah, so uh, most of the algorithms we got implemented are in some way spectral, so we'll give a quick overview of how the spectral method works for clustering. Uh, you start off with some kind of matrix which contains the information you need about your graph. So the, the simplest one to take is just the adjacency matrix, and in the case of sign graphs, that's going to have, it's an n by n matrix, it's going to have ones where there are positive edges and minus ones where there are negative edges. Uh, so you can just take that matrix, or you can take some kind of Laplacian, um, which in this case is you take a diagonal matrix of degrees, um, and then you just subtract the adjacency matrix. And there are various other things you can do or normalizations of those you can take, but it's going to be one of those basic kinds usually. Um, and once you've got your matrix, you can just find your top k eigenvectors, uh, kind of covering up a bit there, because for adjacency matrix type matrices, you want to have the eigenvectors with the largest eigenvalues. For Laplacian type matrices, you want to have eigen vectors with the smallest eigenvalues. I'll call them both top eigenvectors. Um, and you can think of these as like relaxations of indicator vectors for the best k different ways to cut your graph, because that's what you're really looking for. Um, and you can solve this problem by these eigenvectors computationally. And if you list these out in a matrix, then that's giving each node k different coordinates, uh, one for each eigenvector which maps it into Euclidean space. So you get some kind of map into k-dimensional Euclidean space, and then you can just use a clustering algorithm that works on Euclidean distances, such as k-means. Uh, so we've got an example here. This is a graph. It's randomly generated based on a model we're going to see in the next couple of slides. And there are two planted communities here. There's the squares and the circles. Uh, the blue edges are positive. The red edges are negative. 
if you look into that mess somewhere very closely, you might be able to notice that usually there are blue edges between nodes of the same type, so the same shape, and red edges between nodes of a different type. There is some noise, so it's not always the case, um, but it's sufficiently the case that we should be able to recover the two different communities here. Uh, so we're applying spectral clustering with k equals 2. That means we take, say, the adjacency matrix, take the top two eigenvectors, and if we then plot a graph where this is just the coefficient in the first eigenvector, that y-axis is the coefficient in the second eigenvector, what we should find is that the points separate out nicely so that any Euclidean clustering algorithm should be able to tell us that there are two groups here and those are the communities in the graph. Okay, so that's pretty much how all of the spectral algorithms, which are really the, all the algorithms we'll talk about in this talk, work. Uh, the only real differences are what matrix you take at the start, and there are a couple of other things which we'll talk about later, but that's the gist of it. So. I'll pass back to you, Aldo. So, uh, Peter was describing this synthetic model uh, uh, that in which you have planted communities. This is in general called the signed stochastic block model. You have n nodes, you have uh, k colors uh, the, uh, or clusters, and you have a c that is the mean degree, so the, the mean number of uh, people uh, that each uh, person in a network uh, knows. And uh, eta is the probability of having uh, um, essentially a negative uh, uh, edge within a group or a positive edge between different groups. So it's the noise, the dominating noise. So if we then uh, uh, plot uh, uh, the score, the recovery score of the algorithm of standard clustering algorithm, like the one based on the adjacency A, the Laplacian is L, the symmetric Laplacian is L sim, and B and C, these are the most famous uh, spectral clustering algorithm for sign networks then of course uh, with noise going to zero, you have perfect recovery. Now this is a scenario for which we have many communities, K is 21, and uh, we found this to be a particularly hard scenario to, for standard spectral clustering. And also the case for which C is very low, so graphs that are very sparse, uh, you know, uh, essentially every node is only connected to two other nodes uh, in a network, in this case of 10,000 nodes. Uh, this is also quite challenging, and even though the theoretical threshold is, is above zero for uh, algorithms like the, uh, based on the adjacency. This can be calculated analytically. Uh, the algorithms fail because uh, they become dominated by um, noise, essentially become so strong uh, um, the, because essentially you, you find results in which only one node is clustered singularly and all the rest is uh, in, in the rest of the cluster. So, um, so we will focus on, on this uh, setting and on these four algorithms. Uh, because we found those to be um, where, uh, where the most, uh, you know, the, the greatest improvement could be achieved, uh, in particular on, yeah, on the algorithms that we developed. Yeah, so I'll start off with, uh, this is one of the existing methods, the sign Laplacian, and then I'll describe what we can do differently to improve performance in those cases where it fails. So it's just a spectral method, as I was talking about on the previous slide, uh, and the matrix we take is this L bar, uh, which is just... A there is the adjacency matrix, and D bar is just the degree matrix if you ignore the signs of the edges. So you just add up the absolute values of the edge weights for each node, put that in a diagonal matrix, that's D bar. Uh, so yeah, and then that equation is just the equation you solve to find the eigenvalues, and from there you do the same stuff that you did before. Uh, so firstly, when the graph is very sparse, the problem with this is that it's very sensitive to outliers. So you, if the graph is sparse, you often get nodes with particularly high or particularly low degree, and they throw everything off, right? It's, uh, this often will put them in clusters on their own, which is not good. Um, so there's this slightly different matrix, which we can use, called the Beta Hessian, or the deformed Laplacian, which takes some parameter R, and basically mixes around the ratio of those two matrices A and D bar, and also adds some multiple of the identity along the diagonal uh, to regularize the matrix, which means it's less sensitive to this noise. Um, so there is some justification for doing this. It comes from statistical physics, so it's basically magic. That's all <laughs> I really know about it. Uh, so that works quite well when the graph's very sparse. Uh, the other case, when we have a lot of communities, the issue there is that if we take a lot of eigenvectors, our eigenvalue gap gets smaller and smaller, and eventually the noise uh, kind of overrules our signal and we start getting useless eigenvectors. 
So there's this generalized eigenvalue problem formulation, which was proposed by our supervisors that we developed during the project, where instead of adding together your positive and negative edges at the start, taking the Laplacian, you take Laplacians at the positive edges and the negative edges separately. So that's, these are just normal Laplacians, but you just take the positive edges, compute a Laplacian, take the negative edges, compute a Laplacian, uh, put it into this only slightly more complicated formula, and there are numerical solvers that can find eigenvectors, eigenvalues of this generalized eigenproblem. And this turns out to perform better for larger K because basically you're preserving more information here. You, you kind of destroy a bit of information by adding together your positive and negative edges when you're taking eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Uh, so that's one thing we can do. The other thing we can do is, so the standard um, spectral method works well when k is 2. So why don't we just reduce to the case when k is 2? So we, we want more clusters than 2. We run an algorithm that gives us some clusters. And these clusters aren't perfect. We want to improve them. But now we have these clusters. What we can do is just randomly take two of them at a time, merge them together, and then run k equals 2 clustering on them using exactly the same algorithm <coughs> that's our standard if we want to. We could use any clustering algorithm we want for k equals 2. Uh, but spectral ones work quite well. And we can just repeat this, right? And if we improve um, the clustering within just the two clusters we're looking at, then we've improved the whole clustering. Uh, so this kind of gives us the power of k equals 2 clustering, even when k is larger. OK, so those are the new algorithms that we developed. I'll uh, pass back to Aldo for the performance. So going back to the scenarios I was uh, describing uh, just before, in which we have many communities, all very sparse graphs, as uh, Peter was, uh, um, um, was suggesting, we, we see that OK, H, which is the beta Hessian, doesn't improve uh, in the case of having many communities because it's essentially it is based uh, on the Laplacian. It is just a deformed Laplacian, so we don't expect to be able to overcome the theoretical threshold for the Laplacian and the adjacency. Um, but on the other side, the generalized eigen formulation does a lot better and it does overcome the, the, um, the threshold and it does improve even more if you use the post-processing, the iterative post-processing on the results uh, generated by the GE. Um, while um, for the very sparse case, the generalized uh, eigensolver does not do uh, as well uh, as, uh, I mean, it does, does do as well as the others, which means it doesn't learn anything, and the post-processing doesn't help, uh, in, of course, because k equals 2, and, and it's really the same as a. Um, and on the other side, instead, the signed version of the beta Hessian, uh, it is able to detect uh, communities up to the theoretical threshold. Uh, which is uh, yeah, mm, which is quite impressive because all the other methods fail. Uh, so um, so yeah, summarizing uh, uh, the GE is particularly suited for cases in which uh, the graph is not too sparse, but we have many communities. While the beta Hessian is really outperforming all the other methods, and it actually reaches the the, the theoretical threshold where standard uh, methods uh, of Laplacian and adjacency fail. Uh, so we then went on testing uh, real data sets result, uh, yeah, from which people Yeah, so there are about. two natural types of real data uh, which we can apply these algorithms to. Firstly, there are some social networks in which you have negative edges, so I'll put these graphs up already, but for an example, the Wikipedia data set there is people run for to be an admin of Wikipedia, and they can vote yes or no to each other as to whether they want that person to be an admin. Uh, so you get positive and negative edges in the graph. Uh, people have tried to cluster these graphs with limited success because they are quite difficult to cluster. Generally, you have some huge area which is very sparse, and there's basically no clustering structure you couldn't find there. Um, but as you can see from this picture, or these pictures, we can find some structure. So blue here is positive edges, red is negative edges. What we're looking here is blue squares along the diagonal means a cluster where these uh, nodes are actually positively related with each other. So we find some clusters. Uh, we are, to an extent, cheating here because we still find there's a big chunk of the graph which there's just nothing. It's the wasteland. So these pictures are actually, I've computed a clustering for k equals 30 and then thrown away the largest cluster, and that's the adjacency matrix of the remaining clusters. Um, but you can definitely see there is some structure there. Uh, other types of data that often give you negative edges is time series data because when you're com comparing two time series, you're going to be computing some kind of correlation coefficient, like Pearson correlation coefficient, 
with a value between minus one and one. So, and obviously below zero is like a negative edge. And we can see this similar thing happening here. We get clusters along the diagonal, uh, which are more positively correlated than average. And we, this example here is temperature measured at different places in Australia. And we can see our clustering actually recovers some geographic data, even though we didn't give it geographic locations of where these uh, measurements are taken, just based on the similarity between the weather conditions at those points. So that's a reclustering of Australia. We have a similar thing for rainfall, where you get an even better defined clustering um, that can locate regions of Australia with similar weather based just on the time series. And last example we have is financial data, where we're comparing the return of all the companies in the S&P 1500 index. Uh, so again, we get a graph that shows a clustering. And if you have really good eyesight, you can make out this picture here. Um, the black lines separate the clusters. So we can see between some of these black lines that almost all of the companies put into a particular cluster were from a particular industry. Uh, and we didn't give it the industry data. So it's kind of recovered that data from um, from just the correlations. OK, so that's the end. We've run out of time, so I'll wrap it up here. Uh, basically, summary of what we achieved in the project. Uh, we've put out this package that allows people to run sign clustering algorithms, uh, old ones and new ones that we've developed. And we've got some examples on loads of different types of data showing that often the new algorithms work better than the previous ones. Um, so we still want to extend and maintain this package. There are other algorithms we can add to it if they turn out to be good. And also, we're hoping to write up these results and publish a paper on them at some point in the near future. OK, so that's everything. Thanks for listening.